I'm Sebastian Rotella, I'm the author of the novel Rip Crew, and I'm a senior reporter at ProPublica. Sicario was a, was a good movie, and some of the things it portrayed were very accurate. For example, that, that shootout at the border, if you remember, in Sicario, when they're at the border crossing, stuck in traffic. That has happened, and something that I was very worried about when I was covering the border, because you, you know that, that, that is a sort of a prime uh, vulnerability moment when you're stuck in that traffic at the border. There were other things, in, for example, in Sicario that I thought push the envelope, the, the, the sort of gratuitous and casual torture taking place on U.S. territory. That in my experience, you know, it happens very rarely. I'm, I'm not really not aware of it and, the, and that, that isn't because there aren't particularly Latin American uh, law enforcement and intelligence and military units that work with the U.S. that engage in that kind of activity, but it tends to happen precisely in those countries. You know, the idea that you would bring someone into the U.S. to do that and expose yourself to all kinds of potential prosecution and, and scandal, that did not ring true, for example. So it, it really depends. I think Narcos is quite well researched. What happens is, and I've done this having written fiction and having been involved in projects where you move this stuff to the big screen, things have to be simplified, they have to be made uh, dramatic, they have, you, know, you lose nuance. And oftentimes there will be things that happen in real life that I think would make for good, would be good on, on, a, on a TV show or a movie, but they're harder to portray because oftentimes they happen out of ineptitude. Right, I mean, the, the, the scary thing sometimes about this world is, is the combination of that, how lethal, but sometimes how inept or how, how unsophisticated some of these actors are. That factor that is hard to portray in the best series, this question of ineptitude of the mix of sophistication and uh, coincidence and sort of human uh, flaws, I think when that is drawn out in series, that's when they're at their best, because I think that is very human and that is very real. There's still a sense of the drug lords in Mexico. You know, people talk a lot about Chapo Guzman who was just captured. The thing about Chapo Guzman is he was kind of the last of the drug lords of his style. And one of the reasons that Mexico is so violent and the drug violence and drug corruption has gotten so bad is precisely because the generation of drug lords like Chapo Guzman has kind of died out. And the people who run most of the cartels now, the cartels are atomized and fragmented for one thing. And the other is what you have is a phenomenon as, as the drug lords like Chapo Guzman have faded out, the trigger men, the gunmen who pretty much resolve everything through violence have risen. So it's not to say that Chapo Guzman and the Ariano Felix brothers whom I covered in Tijuana years ago and others weren't violent. They were bloodthirsty and sadistic, but they also had a sense of when to corrupt rather than kill when to do packs, when to, you know, how to, how to, how to approach this as a, as a business, a violent but a business, but a business nonetheless. Whereas the drug cartels like the Zetas and some of the, the remnants of other cartels that have risen, the Zetas were former commandos in Mexico, uh, actually military men who took over, who created their own cartel. Pretty much they resolve everything through violence. So people think about a drug lord sort of sitting on a throne somewhere and running uh, this vast empire and it's much more a series of smaller very anarchic, dangerous, chaotic empires that are, you know, that have been splintered and fractured and that unfortunately has created more violence and not less.